Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, babies in their diapers, welcome to the Tiberia Show with your host, Tiberius Boy! That's me, Tiberius! Today, we're going to talk about some very awesome stuff. We have a Tower Defense video game, a book about a group of friends called the Data Set, and we have a totally awesome guest. Today, we have the one, the only, the amazing Diana Spence! Hi, Tiberius. Thank you so much for having me on your show today. I am really excited. You're welcome. And Diana helps me get some of the awesome books that I review on my show. And she runs an adult daycare center. I do. And a bookstore. (laughs) Well, today we're going to start off with a video of the week. And this is going to be a pop. And now it's time for the video game of the week. Today's video game is Balloons TD6. This is a game on the Steam platform. It was made by Ninja Kiwi. This is a very addicting tower defense game. And it was only $1 for me. Well, first off, I begged my dad to buy me a new game. And he told me I could buy it with my Christmas money. I was not amused. So I found the cheapest game. But boy, sometimes you actually accidentally make a good decision. Well, this game is awesome. I started the tutorial, and it was very easy. I got to level 20 in like 30 minutes, and I had to wait for my dad to catch up. Then the real fun begins. We got to play co-op mode and help up each other up. So you get to upgrade towers and earn unlocks as well, and get achievements. Well, my favorite tower is called the Tack Shooter. It's like a pink barrel that shoots tacks in all different directions to pop balloons. You can make it go faster or even farther. I love the Maelstrom ability that wipes out all of the balloons on the map with like spinning razor blades. Well, I give Balloons TD6 10 out of 10 stars because you really get to adjust the towers for your own playstyle, and it is fun to pop all of the balloons. It is so much more fun when you play with your friends on Steam, though. That is sounds amazing, Tiberius. I wish that I knew how to play video games. Over 40 years, Playhouse Central Florida has provided education, independent life skills, and job training to thousands of Central Floridians who live with blindness or any degree of vision loss. Whether it's picking out clothes in the morning or just moving around your community and serving Orange, Seminole, and Osceola counties, contact Playhouse Central Florida at 407 407- or visit them online at lighthousecfl.org. The Tiberia Show would like to thank one of their dedicated sponsors, Custom Designs Orlando. These guys are on Mills Avenue and do all sorts of stuff, ranging from photo ID badges, engraved signs, custom Braille ADA signs, vinyl lettering to trophies and awards. The cool part about Custom Designs is they can ship products all over the United States. You can reach them at 407-898-0373 and tell them that Tiberius sent you. And now it's time for the book of the week. The data set March of the Mini Beasts. This book is written by Ada Hopper. This is a great series about three friends that can get into danger, action, trouble, and adventure with science. Well, let me read the back of the book. In fact, Diana, would you like to do the honors? Tiberius, I would love to do the honors. So, meet the data set. While selling chocolate bars for a fundraiser, Gabe, Laura, and Caesar find themselves face to face with their mysterious neighbor, Dr. Gustav Bunsen. Through this chance encounter, the kids discover that Brunson's home is actually a state-of-the-art laboratory filled with the latest and greatest technology. Now, the science-loving trio cannot wait to try out Bunsen's newest invention. Because, after all, what is the worst thing that could happen? Well, this is an arrow book and is worth one full point. It's made for third grade, but six months. Well, this is a great book about 
useful. It's a great book for kids that love science and getting into trouble, like me. So the dad says he's trying to sell chocolate bars to raise money for the school, but someone keeps eating them. Well, this is not good either. Well, they decide to visit the spooky house where they meet Dr. Gustav Bunsen, and he buys two boxes of chocolate bars. Well, this would help a lot, but he wants to try his new growth way. Well, they do not want to do it, so they decide to go ahead and use their toy dino. So it does not work, and they go to the treehouse the next day. Well, this is a cool place with all sorts of stuff. Well, then, the next day, the doctor is back with a new improved growth ray, and then it fails again to, like, make it bigger, but it makes all of the toys alive. Then, my favorite part is when the uh, all of the alive animal toys escape. And I would love to tell you more about the book, but you should really read the book. Well, I give the data set March of the Mini Beast 10 out of 10 stars because it was really cool that the ray worked, and it turned the toys alive. Well, I, I really can't wait to read the second book in the series. I mean, like, this is so cool. Tiberius, I love your enthusiasm for reading. See, David Smith, law.com. You can call him at 407-801-2667. Wait, you are not Chuck. My dad can help when people get hurt. He loves to help if you are ever injured at work or in a car accident, you should call my friend Chuck. You can call him at 407-801-2667. The website again is cwsmithwall.com. Offices, Orlando. Does it actually have that much W's? <laughs> Midstate Fire has been providing top quality fire equipment services for three generations to the Central Florida area. Don't wait for an emergency to repair. Call Midstate Fire today at 407-246-8855. Get your fire extinguishers and emergency lighting for both your home and businesses by visiting www.midstatefire.com. That number again is 407-246-8855. And now it's time for the interview of an interesting person. Today's guest is going to be so much fun. Today we have the one, the only, the amazing Diana! <laughs> well, Diana helps me get some of the awesome books that I review on my show. And she also runs an adult daycare center and a bookstore. Tiberius, thank you so much for having me. And I'm glad that you're recording this because I want all my kids and people to know I am amazing. <laughs> Just like you said. Well, so first off, how are you enjoying being on the show? I am having a blast. I've never done anything like this, being formally interviewed by such a handsome young man. So um, I'm having fun. Okay, so I have to ask. I know why we have kid daycare centers, but why do we need adult daycare centers? (laughs) You know, that's a really, really good question. Um... Well, you know, have you ever been to a kids' day center before? Yes. Yes, okay. So it's a place for kids to go um, because their moms or their dads or their grandparents um, aren't able to watch them and keep an eye on them and keep them safe. So um, I have an adult day center. For the same reason, um, these are adults that need somebody to look after them and help them and make sure they're safe. What about help them get and jobs? That's why we have an adult and help them get jobs too. Yes. Okay, so what exactly do you do there? Like, do you play games and sing songs or do you just do work? <laughs> you know, that's a really good question too. Um, Yeah, the days, they do all kinds of things. Before 
our pandemic and COVID, um, a lot of our folks were able to go out in the community and go shopping and movies and fun activities. And when you talk about singing songs, we even had a music therapist that would come in and they would have um, all kinds of different instruments and they'd sing. They put on concerts before. Um, and then, then there's the stuff that's not so fun, like the job training and, and working and things like that, too. Yeah. Hey, at least they don't have that at kid daycare centers. <laughs> okay, so what is the best part about running an adult daycare center? I think the best part is getting to meet um, all the wonderful people that come there. Um, And just like and just like any any place else, some people you like and some people you don't. Um, So, yeah. So um, but, you know, you you learn um, when you go to school. There's some kids that you like and some kids that you don't like so much. Yeah. The same with running an adult day center. But the ones that you do like and you do get to meet, um, it's a great relationship. So it's a lot mm-hmm. of fun. So does it take like a lot of training to be able to do this? It does take an awful lot of training. Um, I have been doing this since 1982. I don't know wow. if you remember 1982, <laughs> but it was a long time ago. My dad was like 10 years old when that happened. <laughs> what got you interested in running an adult daycare center? I, Tiberius, I retired um, in 2012, and I still, um, I enjoyed working with folks that with, with, dis, with developmental disabilities, and I wanted to continue to do that in a different way, and I thought there was some ideas and things that I could do um, that would um, be, bring meaning to their lives, and so that's how I decided to start running an adult day center. Okay, well, what is the hardest part about running an adult daycare center? Making sure that um, I am prepared for every emergency, um, (laughs) which sounds impossible. um, But I've been doing this for so long now that um, I've had lots of weird things happen. And, you know, people get sick or accidents happen. And so you got to be on your to- on your toes all the time um, and paying attention to make sure that everybody's safe and healthy. You help me with the books I review because you started a bookstore. How do you go from adult daycare to bookstore? <laughs> I know. It, kind of, it sounds kind of weird, doesn't it? Yeah. But because, yeah, really weird. Well, one thing, like you, Tiberius, I love to read. And I read all the time. I read all the time all kinds of books. And I had folks that we were doing job training with that needed a place to go um, to learn some skills like running a cash register or um, learning how to put things, stock shelves or price things. And um, I just got in my head one day that maybe a really cool place for them would be a bookstore. And we did not have a bookstore here in town. So um, we opened a bookstore. So we bring folks here and teach them jobs. And they were able to go out and get other jobs. And so here we are, seven years later. And we've got this two-story bookstore, which is really cool. Yeah. Well, did it really work? And do they love working there? That's a great question, Tiberius. Um, Yes, it worked. It worked so well that we had a waiting list um, for a while for folks that wanted to work here because we can only have so many people work here at a time. And yes, um, they loved working here. In fact, um, one of the problems that we did run into is that they didn't want to leave. They wanted to stay here. And I couldn't give them a full-time job because we're a bookstore. Um, but eventually, yeah, people found jobs other places, yeah. and they went on. Well, what is the craziest thing that has happened while you were doing your passion? Oh, that's a hard one, Tiberius. Um, 
because there's a lot of crazy things that happen around here all the time. But probably the craziest thing that I can think of right off right off the bat is that we have um, we call him our friendly ghost here at the bookstore because he likes to move things or or take or <sighs> kick books off the shelves and things. And we like call throw him on the floor. Yes, throws them on the floor. Yeah, so we have videos of our bookstore ghost uh, putting books on the floor and moving things around. Ah. <laughs> I hope it's still friendly so that you like don't go there at night. And then the ghost is yeah. He's a friend. He's a friend. He's a friendly ghost. I'm not scared of him. <laughs> How do you know what kind of books to pick out for people? Do you have to know all of the books? Ah. Uh. You know, you have the best questions, Tiberius. Um, it is hard. You know, people, people that it's part of my job, people ask me about books all the time. And I know what I like, but what I like might be completely different than what you like. And so I always ask people, tell me about books that you've read that you really like. And then by you telling me or the customers telling me books that they like and authors that they like, then I'm able to try to find something and make recommendations and find based all on those what they books t- and f- yeah. and actually buy the books. Yes. Okay, well what is your greatest achievement in life? It has nothing to do with work. Um, my greatest achievement is raising three beautiful daughters oh. and and seeing them grow up and go to live lives on their own. That's my greatest achievement. <laughs> well, who helped motivate or inspire you the most in following your dreams? My parents. Um my my mom and my dad they um they both worked very hard all their lives and then one day my dad said um i'm not going to work in this factory anymore i'm going to start my own business and it was a very scary thing i think i was 11 years old at the time and there were five of us and he quit his job and my mom quit her job they both worked in a factory and they went out and they started their own business wow. and grew it from scratch and supported our entire family with their own business wow. so they were very inspirational to me mm-hmm. well what's the coolest thing that you have ever done when I went to Mexico a couple years ago I went down in a submarine underneath water and that was so cool (laughs) you can look out the windows and see all the schools of fish and things like that it was very cool I like how you say schools (laughs) well what about you my listeners if they wanted to grow up to run an adult daycare center or even a bookstore Um, Tiberius, I would say that it doesn't matter what your dream is, and it doesn't matter if you want to run an adult day center or you want to run a bookstore, you just got to be passionate about what you do, Um, and you got to be willing to put the time and the effort into it. It's not something you can do um, just kind of half-baked. I mean, you got to put a lot of time and thought and effort into it. It's a lot of work. It's a lot of work. Diana Spain, 2021. <laughs> That's my quote. They'll, they'll put that um, on my tombstone, Tiberius. It's a lot of work. <laughs> a lot of work. Diana Spain, 2021. If you could go back 10 years and tell yourself something, what would it be? I would say enjoy if I went back 10 years I would say take time to enjoy um, family more because I, for the last 10 years I've been building a business and it's been a lot of work um, before when I was just working before I retired you know you could take vacations and not think about it but when you own your own business you think about it all the time you never, you never stop thinking about your own business. So, well, what did you want to be when you were a kid? When I was your age, you know what I wanted to be? I wanted to be a writer. 
In fact, I can remember for Christmas asking my mom、um, for a typewriter for a Christmas present, and she got me one. And、um, I used to play all the time with my typewriter and type things up. But as I got older,、um, Tiberius, I realized that I am a better reader than I am a writer. So that's why I have a bookstore. <laughs> well, if you could do any other job that you are not already doing, what would it be? I would.、Um, I would probably be making a whole bunch of stuff. I like to make things. I especially like to make things、um, that are、uh, from recycled items. So you see stuff like people that use spoons and make、uh, things out of spoons or paper products or whatever. That's the kind of stuff that I enjoy doing. Being、okay. creative, like crafts and yeah, like craft stuff.、Um, I do a lot of stuff with books、uh, mm. and book pages and things like that. But what was the biggest mistake you ever made, and how did it change you as a person? Man, Tiberius, these are tough questions.、Um, <clears throat> the biggest mistake I ever made was probably、um, moving out of my mom and dad's house when I I had just graduated from high school. And I wanted to get my own place and work a job and do my own thing. I didn't want to go to college, and so that's what I did. I moved out. I wasn't.、Um, I just turned 18 years old. I was had a job as a waitress, and I was scraping by, just trying to make ends meet. And I did that for a long time. So if I had to do it all over again, I'd have probably stayed at home longer and went to college right off the bat. Yes. Well, do you have a website or Facebook for my listeners that want to follow you? Thanks, Tiberius. Yes, actually, I do. If、um, we are on Facebook at Kix Mix Books,、uh, it's K I C K S M I X Books, or we have a website which is www dot Kix Mix Bookstore dot com. Okay. Well, what is that one question that you think I forgot to ask you? Wow.、Um, hmm. One question that you forgot to ask me: Do I have any pets? Well, do you have any pets? I do. In fact, I have one here at the store, which I'm surprised he hasn't shown up yet. I have a big black cat here at the store. His name is Edgar Allan Paws. He's named after Edgar Allan Poe. Have you ever heard of Edgar Allan Poe?、Mm-mm. No. I am sure that in school you will probably learn about him、um, when you probably get into high school, because he's he's a an author that has written a lot of books. High school. <laughs> I have to change schools for that. <laughs> well, thank you, Diana, for being my special guest. Can you stick around for math corners? I would love to, even if I'm not very good at math. <laughs> well, that's fine. The Tibius Show would like to thank Buggy Creek Air Boat Adventures for being one of our sponsors. I got to go on an air boat and saw a real gator. I even got to go to the gem mine and mine for some gems. We ate a steak dinner at the restaurant. Even got some gator rights. If you want to have a blast with the entire family, I suggest you go to www.bcairboats.com right now. Get your tickets today. The website again is bcairboats.com. Oak Ridge Gun Range is a family-oriented shooting range that has been in business for over 30 years. They specialize in basic firearm training and offer numerous services such as consignments, gun trades. Gunsmithing and concealed weapon classes. I even got my training for gun safety at Oak Ridge Gun Range. Great customer service and firearm safety is what they do best. So find out more at oakridgegunrange.com. Tiberius' favorite subject: it's math corners. Thank you 
so much, Diana, for helping me with Math Corners. Today, we're going to talk about order of operations, slash P-E-M-D-A-S. Well, I know that we have talked about this a couple of times with PEMDAS, but this time, we're going to show you what happens if you don't follow the PEMDAS rules. Now, let's look at the simple math problem of 4 plus 2 times 5. Now, if you follow PEMDAS, you will do the 2 times 5 first, and then get to 10, and then you add the 4, giving you 14. Now, from what happens, that uh, some people do it from left to right, no matter what. Well, that would be... If, well, they would do the 4 plus 2, which is 6, and then times 5, and then that would be 30. Now, 30 is not 14, so which one is correct? Well, if you know PEMDAS, you know that 14 is the right answer. And you can always check your work. Well, it is very important to check your work also. And also, if you don't do that, then you get a big fat red X, or maybe an F, on your homework. So Diana, do you know all about the order of operations? You know what? Um, I do now. <laughs> wow. And now it's time for the heart of a lion. As you know, we talk about the qualities of living by the heart of a lion, which stands for leadership, integrity, obedience, and nobility. For me, I think integrity is doing what is right even when no one else is looking. While the qualities of integrity is honesty, sincerity, truthfulness, and fairness. Well, this week, I was playing with my friends by my computer, and I decided to throw a super large bouncy ball. Well, this giant ball of rubber was being passed back and forth, randomly hitting my monitor and the desks around me. But I was having fun. Well, I threw the ball and knocked over my mom's favorite snow globe. And to the top of it, and landed on a computer and spilled inside. I had to go to my mom that I broke her snow globe and help clean it all up. It is hard to be honest about something when you are going to get into trouble. But I told my mom it was honest about my mistake. So Diana, did you see or use integrity at all this week? Tiberius, that was a great story. And you know what? To me, um... Being honest, I think, is one of the most important things that you can do and learn. Um, doing the right thing is always the best thing. So, integrity, yes, I think that's important, especially when people come in and they're giving me change or money and I'm working the cash register. It's always important that I make sure that they get their right change back um, because. I think it's 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 very important to be honest and fair at all times. Yeah, it is, really. Okay, and we should always try and be lion strong in everything we do. Shouldn't we, Diana? Absolutely. Great, great message, Tiberius. And that's our show, folks. I'm going to thank the one, the only, the amazing... being on my show. It has been so much fun talking with you today, and I can't wait to see which books you have selected for me next month. <laughs> Thank you, Tiberius. This has been truly a fun experience, and one like no other I have ever been a part of. <laughs> and that's because of you. Well, you're welcome. And be sure to listen to us next week on the Tiberius Show with your host, Tiberius Bow!
The Tiberia Show is not filmed in front of a live studio audience. Executive producer, Joseph Boy. Production editor, Pierre Laguerre. Green Room manager, Danny Boy. And your program host, Tiberius Boy. The Tiberius Show is copyright 2018.